directly in our united andhra pradesh so that's why that's why we have you know uh, large areas where uh, uh, you can come across these mango orchards now the conditions you know which damage uh, the mango crop include if there are rains unseasonal rains if there are rains unseasonal rains uh, when uh, the plants are in blossom so there is a very possibility you know if there is a rain it washes away the pollen it washes away the pollen and also even the there is a dropping of uh, you know fruits and also uh, um, the immature um, fruits so uh, so if uh, of course this is not in our hand so that's why every year you know um, farmers suffer because of inclement weather now uh, generally uh, coming to the soils you know generally well drained so no stagnation the mango does not or for that matter even citrus fruits also no plant as such except your what we call rice no crop plant tolerates the inundation that is stagnation of water so is the case with uh, the mango uh, the soils you know generally the light soils the light soils and well drained loamy soils heavy deep soils are quite suitable for the mango orchards so in almost all types of soils so if it is uh, a rocky area a sandy areas dry drought areas these are not good but except that you know if it is a loamy soil very good if it is a medium block heavy soil even if it is a red laterite soils these are uh, very good for uh, uh, going for mango orchards now it tolerates you know ph toleration uh, ranges from 6.5 to 7.5 or so so beyond 7.5 if it is if it crosses you know eight ph that is not good for the mac that is high higher ph that is basic condition even if the salt concentration is more if soluble salts are more in a given area that also not uh, suitable for mango now uh, again you know varieties of course banganapalli is there totapari you have to remember you have to buy hot uh, at least four or five important mango varieties so banganapalli totapari is there swarna rekha neelam already told you pedarasam chinarasam navanitam mahemuda this you have to remember this was produced by frs that is forest research station sangareddy and uh, it has been nicknamed as vikarabad variety of course uh, chirutapudi goa is uh, another variety of course even daseri daseri and mahemuda by crossing uh, this daseri and mahemuda they have produced uh, a hybrid uh, you know that is famous it has you know good quality even the fruit uh, size fruit uh, uh, you know flavor taste etc are very good in daseri and mahemuda of course balam uh, you know alampur benishan is there but is alampur is nothing but uh, on the um, you know in mahbub nagar of course it is uh, on the borderline of uh, karnool and uh, um, mahbub nagar old mahbub nagar so this is the area where uh, you know this alampur benishan comes up well now this is about fruits of course you know mango is also famous for what we call pickles you know pickles priya pickles you no know, pickles generally uh, uh, the jalal variety you know pickles you know generally uh, we go for pickle making or uh, uh, the pickle suitable mangoes come up a little bit later generally in the last week of uh, may generally in the last week of may or in the first by the first week of june generally uh, you know uh, people generally ladies are busy with making uh these pickles so now uh the uh, one thing you have to remember regarding mango is because it is a cross pollinated crop so generally uh if you so if you think that uh, a good variety a, a good size good shape and uh, 
you know less fiber more juice and more flavor if you happen to eat such a fruit and if you want to raise that you know you may not get the same quality because uh, mango goes for what we call cross pollination so that's why you don't get true type true to its mother so that's why generally uh, to get higher yields generally we go for what we call a grafting technique so by using grafting so in grafting what do you do generally the stalk and siam so you raise nursery with uh, any of course any stone will do stone is nothing but here your seed you you raise the crop and of course that will not be uh, the one which ultimately gives you fruits it is only as a base now you graft you 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 get a, a branch from a you know um, from a uh, you know tree which has all desirable features you get a stem of course you graft this with the seedling you are raising now after this what you do you you shift to another higher elevated area you raise there you you go for grafting and you maintain that for another one year or so meanwhile what do you do you prepare your field you prepare your field so here field preparation includes uh, thorough plowing etc then here generally uh, you you go for trenches so generally uh, you know pits of uh, 90 90 90 that is 90 cm square of and 90 cm depth and uh, between two such uh, trenches the distance should be based on the variety so some are you know small bushy and 6 uh, to 7 meters is sufficient if some you know generally our uh, traditional varieties very big trees very big trees they they, they their life span is more than 100 years or so but of course generally we go for don't go for such plants because we want early maturing more uh, yield with all desirable features so generally the distance between two such pits or between two adjacent uh, uh, you know uh, mango trees will be uh, 6 to 10 meters or so so you take this uh, your graft plant and uh, uh, you fill generally these trenches are to be filled with uh, you know uh, silt from a tank or otherwise and uh, even if red soil is available you make all types of soils and you are also you also add what we call form add manure into it and even certain pesticides etc are added so that if uh, any grub or uh, um, any larval larval form of pest is there and uh, you you get rid of that if it is there you know it damages uh, uh, the, the root system of the seedling also ultimately uh, the plant dies so generally uh, we we take all precautions uh, you you maintain you know um, um, that pit is free from all these pests and diseases then you plant that and of course generally this will be taken up in the month of uh, june or july when rains are there and uh, generally uh, you know uh, you 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 take care of that you no know, generally you know uh, it comes to flowering in uh, nowadays you know within 3 uh, three years or so but uh, the good varieties they come for uh, you know flowering in the fourth or fifth year or so so generally you don't uh, um, encourage the flowering so you you um, generally uh, see that the plant grows vegetatively well so you wait for you trim it you cut the branches so that the trunk grows well and there uh, it spreads well so that you get a uh, uh, good canopy and uh, the yield will be more so here um generally you you remove all the basal branches generally and uh, generally what uh, we do is um because only after 6th year or so after 50 after the um uh, you know elapsing of 5 years or so uh, then only you you uh, leave the you know flowers and fruits to set in so generally as the time goes you know the maximum yield will be there of course as the trunk grows as the branches enlarge then only 
the canopy will be more and uh, there you will see large number of flowers coming in flowers and then of course you were uh, you know fruits now here you have to do what you, uh, you see generally after 6th year or so no during uh, fifth from 5th year onwards you will see flowers etc but uh, here generally what you do is uh, fruit drop will be there the young ones young fruits of small sizes generally there is a fruit drop so to check this fruit drop what you do is you go for spraying of uh, naphthalene acetic acid 20 ppm naphthalene acetic acid is sprayed once or twice so that you can check the immature fruit drop okay so this is how uh, you do and uh, generally after grafting you know there are two uh, you know major methods of uh, uh, grafting one is what in arching and the other is veneer, veneer grafting these are two so in in arching what you do is you take the pot you the plot the pot potted plant what you have raised you take this to the area um, where which you consider as mother plant uh, the branch of which has to be grafted and to the, this this is so you shift this but in case of uh, what we call veneer grafting you don't shift generally you get uh, uh, the branch or uh, the cut or uh, a branch with buds and you 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 graft it so these are the two major uh, methods of grafting one is in arching and the veneer grafting in both the cases whatever the case may be so you 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 fit it you cut you cut cutting is then no, this is a new technique there is a technique and uh, you make what we call a v shaped cut like this and uh, um, you if you cut like this you know generally you make uh, uh, the cut of the sion in such a way that it fits well into it it fits well say if it is like this you know generally like this so both of them uh, if they fit well then you you bind it with uh, tape and uh, generally you cover it using uh, dried leaves etc and you leave it for uh, four or five weeks meanwhile what happens you know the cambium of both that the stalk and sion uh, there uh, the tissues proliferate there is a enhanced uh, you know cell division and thereby uh, there is the fusion of uh, the tissues of the two stalk and the stem so now here what you have to do is generally you see that uh, these plants are these young grafts are not exposed to gales so because they are very delicate if they are exposed to uh, you know a high velocity uh, velocity winds or gales there is every possibility for the breakdown so you have to take care of this so then um, apart from this what you have to do you know generally uh, the sion should not have any foliage so before you go for grafting you take out all the foliage so also uh, from the stalk you know uh, you you take out uh, um, you know other side branches so what your main uh, aim should be only you you allow only the sion to proliferate not the stalk stalk is only uh, its main trunk but the other branches you know of uh, only sion have to be encouraged now in some areas you know um they go for what we call you know um they they use lime you know uh, over the trunk in the form of a paste or so so that uh, all the pests do not come and lay their eggs etc they do not cause any harm to the trunk okay so this is uh, how uh, you know the trenches are made the grafting is there and uh, ultimately uh, the grafts are shifted to uh, the into the trenches now of course as you know uh, because it takes it takes 6 uh, or 7 years for the farmer he has to wait more than 6 years to get the yield so during this period uh, his soil or the his field goes you know without any um, you know um, he does not get any uh, yield from that so that's why as a, as a compensation as a little bit uh, uh, you know uh, economy point of view uh, the farmers are advised to raise uh, shorter duration pulses 
like your green gram or horse gram um you know um uh, even black gram etc even vegetables even certain vegetables uh, uh, you you can grow for uh, go for what we call cabbage and uh, cauliflower like you can but don't go for uh, uh, the long duration crops such as your uh, what you call uh, maize or uh, sugar cane or uh, red gram or even castor etc so they take uh, more than 7 or 8 months and uh, they grow you know lengthwise and there will be every possibility you know for the shade of this uh, crop to fall on that on the tree or the uh, the mango plant which, which you are raising so short duration very smaller ones maybe um, 10 to 15 cm high you go for that so after harvest you know either you can plow the entire foliage into the uh, your soil so that uh, it adds to the fertility of the soil so uh, this is how uh, the intercropping uh, pattern this intercropping pattern may be maybe used uh, which gives some monetary uh, you know return for the farmer who has to wait for for the main crop he has to wait for 6 or 7 years or so so uh, regarding inter cultivation inter cultivation is nothing but to remove all the unwanted weeds if there are any weeds you know by doing you know uh, regular plowings and uh, uh, blade harrow um, you know um, uh, blade harrow cultivation etc you you can get rid of all the unwanted weeds that is how you can keep uh, your field very um, uh, clean so if your field is very clean you know so generally there is no scope for the pests and diseases to attack your mango orchard if you keep if you do not uh, um, you know uh, keep your field clean uh, if it is full of uh, you know grasses and other unwanted plants there is every possible because they may act as what we call a host an alternate host where the pests and uh, uh, the you know um, diseases their spores may perinate so that's why keep your field very clean so sanitation this is nothing but keeping your field very clean so now um, of course even if you take all precautions also there is every possibility you know there are certain diseases and pests which are very very common in spite of all your precautions they they appear uh, the important ones being what we call you know mango hopper is there and shoot weber is there of course gall mirch is there flower weber is there these are some of the pests and coming to the diseases you know powdery mildew is there your anthracnose anthracnose is nothing but you know black spots black raised spots of uh, like cold cold spots like uh, spots will be there this is what we call anthracnose is there and uh, leaf spot of mango is also there and pink disease and mall formation etc are there and now coming to uh, the harvest and storage this is important as far as exam is concerned you know so they even they may ask you to name a few uh, commonly occurring pests and diseases on map now coming to the harvest and the storage you know harvest you know generally generally harvest you know uh, the mango comes for harvest uh in the uh, last week of april and uh, yeah, this season continues till uh, what we call till the end of uh, you know may or even uh, first or second week of june and uh, uh, generally pickle mango suppose i told you in the last week of may and the first up to the first, first week of uh, you know june so generally um the good sign the sign of uh, uh, you know uh, maturity of the fruit is generally if you visit any uh, orchard you know uh, from the second week of uh, you know, april or so you will see some fruits falling if you go early in the morning you will see some fruits and also you will see 
certain uh, you know birds like your parrots and others and uh, uh, because of uh, their attack on they 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 make uh, attempts to eat them so then uh, the the fruit ultimately falls down now if you look at that uh, fallen fruit you know you will see some yellowing on the uh, the on the top uh, part of the fruit so now this yellowing shows that now it is ready for harvest now generally the harvest is done by fixing a net to a long bamboo stick and generally um, if uh, of course our uh, you know hybrid varieties are not that tall by using your long bang bamboo stick you can uh, standing on the ground also you you can uh, go for uh, plucking up them or if it is a big tree generally um, people climb over the tree and then by using these uh, long sticks they harvest they pluck them after plucking they what they they have to be dropped onto the ground you know very very carefully you cannot drop if if you go for that you know there is every possibility of the breakage of the mango if it if it gets broken you know of course in a day or two it uh, gets spoiled with the attack of uh, maybe your uh, pests and diseases so that's why care has to be taken one has to be very careful see that no damage occurs so generally uh, that's why they drop gently and uh, a person stands on the ground and uh, by putting what we call uh, the uh, maybe uh, a bl blanket or uh, uh, a gunny bag etc and uh, the person drops down and uh, he takes that onto this and uh, ultimately he drops them on the ground so not direct falling on the ground so uh, no damage uh, done and uh, in the evening you know all these are to be shifted to the area and generally they are graded and they will be transported to the market but of course you know generally uh, the northern markets you know generally in north india uh, the season begins a bit late you no know, one month late or so generally we have our season begins in the month of uh, you know, april and there it begins in the last week of may so that's why our people prefer to catch or send their produce to the northern markets so that's why they go for harvest uh, one week to 10 days ahead of the maturity so uh, they uh, shift their produce that is unripened a bit fully developed but unripe so they shift to northern markets say if you want to shift it to uh, say longer distances like your delhi patna or calcutta etc it takes uh, at least 3 4 days for the truck to reach there so after reaching that uh, the unloading will be done of course and then uh, um, they 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 will be subject to to ripening ripening now generally to enhance the ripening generally they do what we call uh you know hot water treatment now this hot water treatment is nothing but the dip uh each mango into the hot water of 54 or 55 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes and then of course uh, they are shifted and they are uh, put on the floor of course uh they mature they 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 ripen you you are enhancing the ripening period by So no, 32-45. So 32-35, uh, you know, percentage is less time. Say, for example, um, they may take you know a week or so for normal process because they are unripe. Now, by dipping in hot water, you can make them ripe within uh, three days or so. So this is how you are reducing the period of ripening. by hot water treatment of course uh, the other of course this is very common even we have seen you know coat tree interferences wherein these uh, uh, you know um, business people you know business people uh, they go for what we call artificial ripening by putting certain chemicals such as calcium carbide or so and you know doctors uh, um, they caution us that uh, not to go for 
uh, this calcium carbide, which is which has some carcinogenic effects. So that's why uh, now uh, scientists have produced a certain chemicals such as you know mild and quick uh, ripening chemicals such as you know ethafan, which releases which releases gaseous hormones such that is ethylene, and uh, uh, that in turn you know turns your uh, or green mangoes into an attractive yellow of course now you know in another uh, 10 days or so uh, by first week of uh, april you will see uh, you know hyderabad markets full of uh, these uh, you know mangoes of course uh, the uh, very attractive yellow gold color but if you taste them they are not so sweet why because they they are they are right to Ripen. Only artificial ripening has taken place. So this is uh, how the ripening is done. That is, hot water treatment is there. Then uh, using calcium carbide, of course, very careful. And then uh, the good method is using ethafon. Of course, in some areas, even hot smoke also enhances your ripening. Then the final thing is, as far as your exam is concerned, you know, uh, there is what we call uh, um you know storage mango storage is there so mango storage is there as far as the storage is concerned you know Normally, the shelf life is just uh, uh, less than one week or so. So by going uh, for what we call cold storage, where the temperature would be from 8 to 10 degrees or so, or storage under controlled condition, that is where the oxygen concentration is less in a chamber and uh, where the concentration of carbon dioxide is more. Under such conditions, you can enhance the shelf life of your mango produce. And the last one is what we call skin coating with wax wax coating of course this also enhances your shelf life so this is uh, uh, about our uh, you know mango uh, then uh, we move to uh, the citrus fruits so citrus you know of course uh, we did not cover this so far you know citrus whenever we say citrus uh, you know, these citrus fruits are famous for vitamin C. All sour fruits, all sour fruits, maybe you are uh, uh, what we call, uh, you know, uh, you know, sweet orange. Sweet orange in Telugu, what we call, you know, kamalalu. And of course, uh, uh, even uh, we, we will call what we call mosambi also, batai also. So, so sweet orange is there, and this Sadguri orange is there, Batavian orange is there, of course, Mosambi orange is there. And uh, uh, these are some of the varieties, of course, we have what we call Mandarin varieties. This Mandarin is nothing but what we call Santra or orange. Now the Santra or oranges, generally uh, here, uh, how do you differentiate between this and this uh, Santra and Mosambi, you know? So generally, uh, look at Kamala or Mosambi generally the fruit one. Uh, it is very difficult to get rid of the peel. Peeling becomes very, very difficult. So, whereas in Sant uh, whereas in Santra, you know, or oranges, it is very low. You can get rid of the rind that is outer fruit uh, wall very, very easily. Whereas in Santras, uh, whereas in Mosambi generally or Kamalalu. It's very uh, tightly, you know, um, uh, tightly attached to uh, your uh, juicy parts. That is, the, uh, they are nothing but carpels, you know, multi-carpellar, the same carpels. So all these, uh, um, they're, they're formally attached as far as uh, your uh, sweet uh, orange is concerned or kamalalu or batai or mosambi, what we call. So generally, Mosambi is a batai. Of course, they are very big and uh, round, and uh, um, good color is there. 
and uh, the juice varies you know mostly it is straw colored and uh, in you know the good varieties of course the juice is very very sweet and uh, flavor is very uh, sweet flavor will be there now of course uh, now these mandarins that is nothing but citrus reticulata santra is so whenever we say santra or must uh, you know what we call oranges generally the nagpur vidarbha is very very famous now like mango you know here this also uh, indo china region is considered as the place of origin of uh, all these uh, you know um, oranges and uh, santra even our you know uh, lime what we call uh, neem so now uh, generally mosambi or uh, what we call batai here uh, its scientific name is uh, uh, citrus sinensis sinensis otherwise no chinensis it denotes the place of its origin now this um, mandarins of course this is also uh, mandarin means related to china and now that is our uh, oranges but of course nagpur i told you vidarbha is very famous for this and uh, so this is how so your batai and uh, oranges can be uh, easily identified now uh, coming to the climatic conditions you know generally these are uh, they come up well in tropical and also uh, in temperate region, mediterranean regions these are the so it comes up well in both the type of climatic conditions a uh, tropics to temperate regions and uh, uh, you know generally batai what we see nowadays uh, even uh, nalgonda has become famous for uh, what we call uh, this batai and uh, so here uh, but of course uh, whenever we say this you know uh, the rayal sima rayal sima is very very famous for all these citrus fruits maybe your citrus sinensis your citrus reticulata or citrus aranchifolia aranchifolia is nothing but our nimbu that is uh, our uh, lemon citrus uh, aranchifolia nimbu nimakai that is uh, citrus aranchifolia so all these come well in ralsima ralsima is very famous all the four districts even uh, nellur area these are uh, uh, quite suitable for the citrus orchards of course uh, newly uh, recently even uh, uh, in uh, uh, nalgonda districts uh, where uh, uh, the soils are not so good but of course deep where uh, they are sandy loamy deep soils where you cannot raise other uh, you know crops they can be uh, used for raising uh, these citrus fruits so uh, it requires what we call a bit arid conditions arid and hot conditions are needed so arid conditions with a distinct summer and winter variations so these so winter should be very a bit cool and uh, summer should be very hot so these types of conditions you find in uh, the rayal sima area so that's why large tracts you see uh, these uh, citrus orchards there so uh, our um, you know both these that is sweet oranges and uh, what we call your mandarins or santras uh, they no they are seasonal as such as a seasonal of course their season starts uh, um from december to uh, maybe up to february or march whereas our uh, you know acid lime what we call nimbu citrus aranchifolia it is available throughout the year you get nimbus throughout the year but of course uh, um in the months of uh, in the cold see gen now uh, this is the time you know generally uh, there is a lot of scarcity of these uh, you know acid lime now now if you go to market you know even uh, for a, a nimbu of this size you know you have to spend uh, more than 5 rupees 5 to 10 rupees but uh, in uh, you know winter generally in the months of uh, you know december up to 
January, February, uh, the price, the the markets are flooded with them, but of course uh, you you get uh, on a uh, cheap rate. So uh, what you have to remember here is uh, both those Santra and uh, uh, Mosambi they are uh, seasonal as such, but uh, uh, these acid lime or uh, our nimbu is available throughout there. But of course now if you go to the big mall, of course you will see the imported ones. The imported are there because the climatic condition that we have are not there in a uh, uh, western west so there uh, it could be uh, you know temperate climatic or when we have temperate climate there there could be tropical so that's why you now by using you know all these storage uh, cold storage uh, method or methods and other uh, shelf enhancing techniques now, now they are being uh, stored for longer duration and now of course they are available like your apple like your banana, now they are available, of course, throughout the year. So, uh, as I told you, generally, uh, the soils, so deep soil should, soil should be very deep and uh, uh, they should not be hot pan. Hot pan should not be there because it's also a tree habit, a tree habit uh, which lives for 50 or 60 years or so. So that's why its uh, root system has to penetrate deep. So that's why deep soil should be there. And of course, uh, um, the loose and not so fertile soils can also be uh, used for raising this. Uh, even uh, dry, dry conditions are good, I told you, but um, when it is uh, too hot, uh, when uh, um, you know, required moisture is absent, then you go for uh, flooding by using a borewell or well and other you know, irrigation uh, uh, water, the sources that you have at your hand, that can be, they can be used. So now generally, the saline soils are not suitable. Saline soils are not suitable for this. So if the, you know, pH is more than eight or so, such soils where the uh, dissolved salt content is high, and uh, now there, uh, you, you were, uh, even if you grow also, you, even in spite of taking all you know hardships, uh, you you do not get good yield. Now, of course, uh, where, uh, similar practice of uh, you know uh, these uh, nursery raising and plantation very similar to our mango. Here also uh, the uh, root stock that is root stock is raised by using uh, you know from ripened uh, batai or oranges. You uh, know uh, seeds are collected, of course. Uh, uh, your seed bed is, uh, and their seeds are raised, nursery is raised, and then uh, carefully uh, these uh, uh, ink plants are shifted and they are uh, shifted onto either into a pot or into a, a plastic uh, cover where um, it is filled with soil. Uh, you, you raise that and uh, of course, meanwhile, you go for what we call grafting technique. Of course, the both the cases that is in both uh, Santra and uh, Batai, you go for uh, what we call uh, uh, you know grafting. But of course, uh, um, as far as uh, lemon is concerned, you know that is sweet lime, the the acid lime, but with nimbu. Generally, because in uh, acid lime, what we have, what we have, you know, polyembryony, polyembryony, where in each seed you have more than. Uh, one embryo and generally these embryos are vegetative embryos because as the embryos are vegetative you know they resemble their mother fully so that's why eh, there is no danger you get uh, uh, the nimbo of uh, uh, the same type very similar to your mother plant but uh, as far as uh, santra and others there generally you we go for uh, you know, grafting. So in all the cases, generally, uh, by, based on uh, uh, the preferable features, so generally, you select your stock and see on and go for grafting and then you shift these uh, grafts to uh, the pits or the trenches you made. And generally, uh, you shift it uh, into the trenches or the, you know, um, pits uh, when there are, uh, uh, you know, early monsoon showers, that is, in the month of June or so. Of course, here also, 
uh, they come for flowering after uh, you know three or four years. Generally, here also we go for we wait uh, up to fifth year or so. And uh, meanwhile, you know, here also what we do is uh, you you uh, you add you know menus uh, in the first year, second, final year or so. So each year generally you you double your uh, um, you know uh, manures manure content. Say for example, if it is nitrogen in the first year generally you give around uh, 300 kg uh, and uh, generally uh, if it is second year 600 and third year 900 1200 1500 or so. So there is even the you know plants respond well uh, for the fertilizer you give. So uh, apart from your format manual, uh, generally we also uh, give uh, these um, you know chemical fertilizers. So uh, now uh, then um, you know similar um, here also uh, generally there is a, um, you know apart from your. Uh, macronutrients of course uh, they also suffer from you know micronutrient deficiencies so generally zinc manganese and iron uh, they suffer from the deficiency of so these zinc manganese and iron so that's why taking the help of agricultural officers you now generally you add these zinc manganese and iron giving you know the supplements to your soil so that uh, your uh, uh, tree or uh, your uh, citrus tree grows well and gives you good yield. As I already told you, generally, if the weather is very cool, cool uh, in those areas, generally we don't need any irrigations. But if it is, uh, say, like your Kurg and Vainad areas of your Kerala, generally, these are very cold, cool areas. There the, you, you may not uh, be required to give any flooding or irrigation. But uh, in other areas, like our areas, like uh, your Ralsima area or Nellur area or Mahabubnagar and Nal Nalgonda areas there, uh, generally we need to give, uh, you know, irrigations. Depending on the uh, nature of the soil, uh, the number of irrigation differs from place to place. So generally maybe um, with a, um, you know, at a regular intervals of uh, every one week or so. If the soil is, uh, you know, black, Soil, deep soil, generally, uh, you you, uh, you you the interval could be uh, two weeks or so. If it's, uh, if it is a sandy soil and uh, not so fertile and its uh, uh, moisture retaining capacity capacity is not good, in such cases, uh, generally you give you know irrigation once in every week. So now here also uh, similar to our uh, you know mango, there uh, generally. For initial five years, generally there are no returns for the farmer. He has to wait uh, for his main crop to come uh, for six six years or so. So here also, meanwhile, um, you know, as a as a little bit uh, compensation, he grows for uh, he goes for what we uh, growing of uh, you know short duration varieties such as your Kaupi or Pilipesara, etc., or in some cases, ginger is there. You, are, uh, uh, um, you, you can grow for uh, Kaupi, Pilipesara, and green gram, black gram, etc. But generally, here also, uh, we, you should not grow, uh, you know, uh, tall and uh, uh, shade casting, uh, you know, crops such as your banana, jowar, or uh, for that matter, your sugarcane, etc., they are to be avoided. Generally, you, you can also grow what we call the vegetables. So vegetables, uh, uh, you, you can grow your turnip, cauliflower, carrot, radish, etc. They can be grown as uh, intercrops in citrus orchards. And uh, so, you know, they may ask you uh, the meaning of mulching. Mulching, they ask. So generally, uh, mulching is nothing but generally, uh, it is a technique of uh, Spreading dry leaves or the straw or your crop residues on the all along the uh, your soil so that it enhances it checks evaporation. 
it checks evaporation of the you know uh, soil water and uh, soil as uh, moisture retaining capacity gets enhanced so even by doing this mulching you know you not only the um, uh, help um, uh, the soil retaining capacity but uh, even that you know you can uh, uh, you you can save your one or two uh, you know irrigations so so mulching i think so here generally um, mulching helps you know re retention of the soil moisture it also checks the spread of your weeds so what you are doing you are spreading you are spreading the dry straw or the leaves etc all along the orchard so thereby if you are covering means the small weeds which are there small weeds they 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 are divided up further or they do they are they are cut off from the sunlight so in due course they die so by you 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 check uh, the menace of your weeds and also you enhance the the moisture retaining capacity of your soil so mulching helps these two way so for mulching you can also use what we call the stubs of uh, stubules of jowar maize and even coconut coir can also be used okay now uh, uh, generally uh, you know um, what we call in spite of taking all precautions generally even uh, the citrus orchards suffer from you know various pests pests such as you know citrus butterfly is there the orange borer is there citrus leaf miner is there and shoot and bark caterpillar is there and citrus mite these are the common pests of course we have certain uh, diseases uh, the most popular disease is citrus canker caused by a bacteria so xanthomonas oxynopodi citri is the bacterium that causes citrus canker on all parts of your it is a systemic disease it forms lesions all along uh, the entire plant body uh, these lesions are found on the you know young branches and the leaves and the fruits so almost on the trunk etc and apart from this it also suffers from what we call gummosis but of course uh, this gummosis is caused by a fungus phytophthora you know you see gum oozing gummosis and of course uh, uh, pink disease is there and uh, other uh, you know greening disease is there caused by what we call mycoplasma so these are the some of the common pests and diseases encountered on citrus orchards now coming to the um, you know cropping and uh, of course harvesting i told you uh, generally um, sweet oranges come to bearing in the fifth year fifth year um, and if it is a acid lime acid lime is nothing but our nimbu now nimbu comes for uh, you know it starts yielding uh, fruits from the fruit bearing starts uh, from the third year or so so uh, so these are the some of the you know precautions and the important uh, you know methods that are to be adopted uh, if you go for uh, uh, you know citrus orchard maintaining of course you know after uh, harvest of course after harvest what we do is uh, generally our people do not do what we call grading but one has to do grading you know so that you it fetches you good return so so generally Uh, the fruits after harvesting, uh, the spoiled ones or the injured ones, they are to be separated. Or else, you know, the entire river uh, um, harvest becomes, you know, putrefied or uh, gets infested with uh, pests and diseases, and uh, you will be put to great loss. So that's why all the injured ones or the diseased and infected ones, they are to be separated at once. And the other ones, you know, based on their size, color, etc. they are to be graded graded 1 2 and 3 like this uh, so they are to be graded and uh, of course you can enhance shelf life by keeping them in uh, cold storage and also similar to that uh, you you can go for uh, what we call wax coating etc so uh, so these are the uh, techniques uh, that are to be learned by uh, any i know 
young entrepreneur who wants to go for uh, uh, raising uh, these uh, citrus orchards or mango orchards so this is about uh, so now here uh, one important thing you have to remember you know uh, as far as citrus fruits you know uh, this uh, already told you citrus sinensis citrus reticulata is there our uh, citrus aranchifolia these are scientific names of course these three fall under what we call rutaceae family and i already told you generally are these uh, citrus fruits are rich in vitamin c that is nothing but your ascorbic acid generally you know doctors ask you uh, to take uh, as far as uh, generally people who are sick or hospitalized for recovery generally doctors advise you to take uh, as much uh, citrus fruits as possible easily digestible and uh, they have to your immune power recovery is very very fast so even now you know in post covid times also uh, we will see you know uh, people uh, gaining uh, becoming too conscious of uh, one's health and uh, uh, people are taking this uh, uh, citrus lime juice uh, lukewarm juice with what they call honey etc on empty uh, stomach uh, now it enhances not only your uh, Mm, uh, you know immune power but also it increases your appetite also very good for health so this is about uh, uh, the fruit crops uh, that are very famous uh, uh, both in north india and south india so if you have any doubt uh, uh, regarding uh, today's class or any class uh, or any portion any topic which we have covered so far Uh, you can raise your doubts and uh, i'll try my level best to clear your doubts and uh, you know uh, tomorrow uh, we will meet same time for our last class and of course we'll discuss about uh, uh, the cashew nut tomorrow and also a coconut we'll discuss about uh, cashew nut to coconut and uh, uh, and uh, uh, even a topic uh, if uh, you come with uh, any doubt i will will try to even uh, discuss that too tomorrow in tomorrow's class so if you have no no doubt uh, if you have uh, anything to be asked so then if that is the case generally Uh, i would like to conclude my today's lecture with this uh hoping to meet you tomorrow same time for the last class of this season okay so no if no doubt let us call it a day and let me conclude my lecture okay bye